Okay, we're to find the volume of the solid that has its base as the triangular region with vertices the origin, one along the y-axis, one along the x-axis, and has cross-sections perpendicular to the y-axis that are equilateral triangles. So I've drawn the base, and we have to find the volume when the cross-sections are equilateral triangles perpendicular to the y-axis. So, I won't attempt to draw the three-dimensional figure, but for each one of these green lines uh, coming out of the picture is an equilateral triangle. Okay. And so, it's our job to figure out the volume of such a shape. If you have an equilateral triangle, all sides are the same, we'll call them S, and what happens when you, well, all sides are the same, all angles are the same, so 60 degrees for each angle, and then when we drop down to get the height of this triangle, we recognize that what we have is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, and the 30 being the uh, angle at the top and the 60 being the angle at the base and so what also happens is that the side gets bisected so this length here is S over 2 in a 30-60-90 right triangle the relationship between the sides are that what's opposite the 30 is what we call X what's opposite the 60 is x root 3 and the hypotenuse is s I mean is x and, and so s over 2 root 3 is the height of the rectangle just a general uh, equilateral triangle has a height of s over 2 root 3 and the base is S so the area would be one half the base times the height so in general the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle is S squared over 4 times the square root of 3 Great. That's what we need. Yeah. <clears throat> the area of a cross section ends up being what, what goes in the integrand. Our job then is to figure out well, what is this S? In terms of the, in terms of the problem, um, we have this line has equation where um, the y intercept is 1 and it has a slope of negative 1. So we have y equals negative x plus 1. And remember, distances off of the y-axis are x distance. And so we can take and solve this for x. And what we have is that x is 1 minus y. So depending on what y is, that distance there is 1 minus y and that's what we'll use to find the side length 1 minus y okay let's go to the next slide and set this up we have that the volume then generically for cross-sectional area is the integral from a to b a of x dx or a of y dy depending on whether you have cross sections that are horizontal or cross sections that are vertical uh, let me use c and d instead of a and b uh, ooh, sorry 
integral from c to d some function of y dy. This is if your cross sections are horizontal. And uh, and this is if your cross sections are, are vertical to the f. All right, great. So we're going to go with this formula here, where we have uh, s is one minus y. We have that area, then is the integral. We'll figure out the limits of integration in a second. Um, root 3 over 4, 1 minus y, quantity squared, dy. How about the limits of integration? Go back to the picture. These get moved vertically upward from a low point of y equals 0 to a high point of y equals 1. Low point is y equals 0, the high point is y equals 1. So that's the limits of integration, 0 to 1. We can pull the constant out, root 3 over 4. And then we go ahead and multiply out 1 minus y quantity squared. And get 1 minus 2y plus y squared dy. That's our, I'm sorry, I wrote it down as a. It's your volume V. Okay, we just forgot this integral and we're done. We have y minus y squared plus y cubed over 3 from 0 to 1 with the root 3 over 4 outside. So we're going to have 1 minus 1 plus a third, and then minus 0. All of that is multiplied by root 3 over 4. These cancel out nicely. And so the final answer for the volume is root 3 over 12, whatever units we have uh, cubed. All right.